Okay, uh, shall, we, shall we start? So, uh, welcome back. So first of all, before uh, starting, I wanted to make a small error, and I think I realized during the exercise session that I forgot something yesterday in the definition of this LFP categories. So basically the idea is that every object in there is a filtered co-limit of compact object, but I forgot to add the condition that the category of compact object has to be essentially small. That, well, that's a technical point, but that can, that's kind of the main point. Like you can, you have like a very large category, but you can handle it by dealing with a category which, where the set of isomorphism or the collection of isomorphism classes of objects is actually a set. Okay. Um, so yeah, so during the last lecture, and during the Claudia's lecture, we've seen this this factorization homology uh, business. So let me remind you that if A is Uh, balanced to a monoidal category, then I claim that this is the same as a symmetric monoidal cat functor from this disk category, and for me it's oriented, so I don't, I will not write it because it's always oriented, but that's like the oriented version of the one appearing in Claudia's picture. So this gives a a symmetric monoidal functor like this, and this embed in this category of two-dimensional manifold, again oriented. And then factorization homology, I don't think I actually wrote this integral sign, I forgot. And you've seen this in, in Claudia's lecture. So there is a, a, a canonical extension on, uh, to the world, to a symmetric monoidal functor on the whole category of, of manifold. And again, I'm just repeating what, what Claudia said. This suggestive integral sing, sign is really the, the uh, this idea that every, um, I, how should I say? That? So I guess that's something I've, I've been repeating a lot. Like every manifold can be decomposed into disk, and you might sort of choose a particular way of doing that. But if you do not want to choose, well, then just integrate over all possible choice. So really, this sort of complicated categorical limit, whatever it means exactly, you should really think of this as some way of like integrating over all possible decomposition of your manifold into disk, basically. And um, so first I wanted to uh, sort of briefly explain, because this definition is a bit abstract and, and I sort of like this diagrammatic picture, which is not available in general, but is available in this particular case. And actually some, some cursor in the literature, oh wow. There's a, s a spider here. Um, yeah, I'll try not to disturb her. Um, <laughs> so the so I, I I just want to quickly explain how it relates to to scan theory. I, I don't want to give like a formal definition of the scan category, but to any <laughs> red monoidal category, you can attach some like uh, the scan category over some surface. And basically, the idea is that if I have say uh, an annulus like this, then basically object will be like mark points decorated by object in A, X, I, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I'm a puppet master now. Uh, yeah, so X, I is in A. And, um, so basically, morphism exists. So if I choose, I don't know, y1, y2. So basically, there are like it's a mixture of two kind of things. First of all, I can do topology. I can take strands and move them around in the surface. I don't know. I can do something like this. Uh, I don't know. Let me draw something and then explain it. I don't know, like phi. And then, uh, uh, yeah, my, my surface is an annulus, and this is a three dimensional. Uh, this is like the surface plus I. Uh, I don't know, let me do something like. Okay. So I have some braid, like some topological stuff, and then I have some 
vertices with some label. And here I want like psi to be a map from x3 tensor x2 to y1. And phi will be a map from x1 to y2. And basically, so if I have a, so by definition, the definition of scan categories tells you that uh, this is a morphism. And, and the relation with factor this, well, maybe, sorry, I should, I should give you some references. So the, the notion of um, scan category appears in, in earlier work of, of Walker, I guess in the 90s or something. So you should really think of, of this as some sort of like ancestor of factorization homology. And uh, the precise relation has been worked out by what you mentioned by Juliet Cook. Okay. So in the scan setting, you actually define morphism like this. But now the idea is that factorization homology is compatible with embeddings. So something I can do is to uh, let me clamp folder. So basically, I can like choose a well, they don't have, they can't overlap. I can choose some disks around every mark point. And it's kind of clear that the, the all possible, I mean, the space of ways of doing that is contractible. So this is essentially unique. And then I can take a larger disk around all of those. So basically, I have embeddings of one large disk and three smaller disks in there. And because factorization of code is factorial with respect to embedding, well, first of all, by definition, this is the tensor product of A. And then this guy is like some functor. And uh, the idea is that, uh, so in particular, the picture on top here gives me an object in uh, uh, in factorization homology, which will by definition be in f of x1 tensor x2 tensor x3. And that is factorization homology of the annulus. This is an object in that category. And likewise, here we have f of y1 sub y2. And then basically, I have like the sort of braiding, like the topology character, uh, because pass become embedding gives me isomorphism between functor. Those pieces give me an isomorphism between like f of this to f of this, maybe in a different order. And then phi and psi, psi are morphism in A. So I can just apply the functor f to those, basically. And then I can compose all of that. So long story short, this picture actually gives me morphism in, in that category between this object and this object, OK? So basically, the idea is that every picture, like, every picture like this gives me an object in this category, and every diagram like this gives me a morphism in that category. Okay. I, in, the, in factorization homology of, of the corresponding surface. What do you mean, where does that leave us? In, in, in that category, factorization homology over the annulus of A. Sorry, uh, factorization homology is an object in like, factorization homology is a functor from manifold to LFP, but then I can apply it to a particular manifold so I get a category. Sorry, so this, yeah. S so this is a category. Yeah, so I, I, I draw it, or maybe I should say like analyst. Yeah. So if I pick a surface, I get a category. Now if I put point on this surface with decorated by object, I get an of A. I get an object in my category. I mean, I mean, the definition of factorization homology can work with like whatever target you want. 
this kind of picture, this is very special to bread monoidal categories. So you don't need to take LFP, like there are other kind of linear categories that you could take. But this picture really makes sense when you have bread monoidal categories, basically. I mean, there might be something like this for arbitrary e e to algebra, but that's, that's tricky, I guess. Yeah, for example, yeah. In A. Yeah, that's a fair point. Here I'm, I'm reusing the fact that, that A has like elements of objects. I mean, I don't know if that's obvious, but I, I guess I, I try to explain how it works. But the basically every um, so an embedding gives me an um, yeah. But I mean, the reason is that it's it's functorial with respect to embedding. So if I have an embedding, it gives me a functor. So now if I decorate my point by some objects, you sh this is really just a notation to say, I apply this functor to the tensor product of those objects, basically. You take this as a definition. And then when I have like some braiding like this, forget about the morphism for now, I have some braiding, it's just a pass in the space of embeddings. So here I have another embedding, maybe in a different order, maybe with different positions. Uh, so then, because this is functorial, this gives me a natural isomorphism between the functor associated with the embeddings. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't. I don't actually choose anything. I, j I just write this as a composition of several things. But that there's. Uh, yeah. So basically everything topological, it comes from functoriality of, of this. And when I want to apply to a morphism, it's just the fact that F is a functor. So I can apply for F to morphism. Th I, I understand this is not a very like, like formal statement that I'm making. I'm, I'm I just wanted to make a point that this, this kind of diagram, which are sort of easy to work with, they actually uh, make sense in this factorization homology context. As though this definition seems to be sort of fairly abstract, we can use this kind of like graphical calculus to compute things or to do things, whatever. Except, so uh, uh, again, I also want to make the point that if you know if this category A is like not semi-simple, for like this really works well if A is semi-simple. If it's not, th this is still well defined, but it doesn't give you like a, a nice description of the of this category somehow. Like there, there are some some issues basically. Like this kind of scan, they are compatible with direct sum, but not with arbitrary extension somehow. But I, I just wanted to, to, to say that this sort of older notion of scan category is actually very naturally related to this, this factorization homology business. Basically. Um, and that can actually be used to, to produce objects on morphism in this category, if, even if that's in general not all of them, basically. Yeah?
no, no, uh, no, no, they are like different objects, but that's why I have like morphisms in here. I, I choose different objects to emphasize the fact that I, I can add morphism in A to those kind of diagrams. Yeah. In A, yeah. So for example, here I have x1, x2. So to that I attach the object f of x1 tensor x2. Then I have the braiding. This is just the braiding in A, actually. This doesn't use the topology of the surface. So here I have like f of x2, x1. But then I can apply the functor f to psi, which functor from, sorry, x3, x2, from x3 tensor x2 to y1. I can just apply f to that. So this will be this bit. And then I'm braiding again. And then I'm applying phi to x1. And that's why I land in y1 tensor y2. So this is a general idea of this, this instinct that's a, a basic mixture of like topological stuff and morphism in A. And um, so basically you have like embedded graphs in A squared plus I. And the vertices of the graph are morphism in your original category. Uh, and if you if you want a formal definition, you, you should check uh, uh, Juliet's paper. It's really well explained with a lot of nicer pictures than this one, actually. Okay, and uh, I guess well something that should be well th that that's to be expected after everything I've done during the first lecture. That uh, maybe I should give an attribution for this. So I think the original version is Benzi Francis Nadler. Yes, <laughs> sorry, forgot. So Benvi Francis Nadler did that in the sort of like in infinity or derived setting. And then with, uh, with David Benvi and David Jordan, we did that for in the Abelian case, which I, I guess is slightly stronger, but not, not that much. Is that factorization homology of some surface with coefficient in rub G is, as you can guess, this category of sheaves on the character variety. So of course this is this is the motivation for you know the first part of the class on on the relation with factorization homology. Okay. So I guess I've I've said it many times, but basically you know the idea is that if I replace replace rep G by rep Q G, and I still haven't told you what that is, but probably I should do that now. Uh, then by computing factorization homology, I get canonical. I want to say quantization, but I actually don't know how to make sense of that word in that context. So let me put quote slash Q deformation. Of, uh, of this character variety. So again, this there is this idea that if you working only with category of sheaves and the sort of geometrical, like, like uh, the theory of sheaves alone gives you like some way to glue things together or whatever. But basically you want to replace it by something which is not like a geometric category. And, and it's not symmetric, it's only bread monoidal. And, and I claim that factorization homology is a correct way to do that. But it also already recovers classical pictures. So it's, 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 it's really a, a strict generalization of that, yeah. No, no, I mean the, defi the definition was not involved in factorization homology. That's like, it's, uh, I mean, it is not the definition, but the way I think about it, because I don't know what the stack is, is that it just module for the algebra function of the representation variety in rub G. Or uh, if you prefer, that's like G equivalent, like the the representation varieties and affine algebraic varieties. So like sheaves on that are just modules for this algebra. And the general idea is that the quadrant sheaves on the quotient are G equivalent sheaves on the single quotient space. Okay. Uh, 
Um, yeah, so maybe I should uh, finally say a word about uh, what what this means. So basically, if you if you choose some generic complex number, uh, there is a certain hot algebra. I assume m many of you know that, but it's probably worth uh, repeating. Which is usually denoted by UQG. Or I should say UQGN in that case. Which at uh, when Q goes to one, it's reduced to uh, the ordinary enveloping algebra of Q of Q of GLN. So it's a it's a Q some sort of like Q deformation of this enveloping algebra on, on really behind the curtain. It, it you should think of it as a quantization of this Poisson structure on, on G. Yes. So is a balancing? Yeah. Oh, it's it's trivial in that case. It just it just the identity. Like when when a like every every symmetric monoidal category has canonical balancing, which is by the identity. But there are other. It's not the is the only one, but, but it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, I say, yeah, in, I would say that indeed Rabji do not see the difference, I would say, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so the, uh, here we are. So basically the, the claim is that Um, so basically, you have this. Sorry, you have this half algebra, and you take like locally finite dimensional modules of that. And the claim is that, I mean, that's a, that's a theorem. Actually, I should say uh, that's probably well. In 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 doubt, I should say in first. Uh, is that rub QG is actually equivalent to rub G as 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 mere categories. So they have they have the same object and the same morphism, they have the same category, but they have very different monoidal structure. And in particular, the, the main, you know, one of the main reasons to care about this category is that this it, it has an interesting and non-trivial. In particular, non symmetry. Related monoidal structure. And again, I want I don't want to be like too explicit, just to sort of connect to what we did before. The um, this bread monoidal structure is actually given by Uh, composed with P, where P is just the usual flip of tensor, and R it's some element in the square of UQG. That's not completely true. You need to take some completion, but but whatever. Um, which is called a, a, a quantum air matrix. It's a solution of something called the quantum young baxter equation. So basically in this category, if you want to do the breathing, you just like flip those two tensor, and then you act with this element air. And uh, let me. Uh, where is it? Yeah, so if. So because this, this category rub QG is actually the same as rub G as a category, there is uh, an analog of the n-dimensional representation. So V is again my, uh, just the n-dimensional vector space. 
then I can give you a, a formula. Like there is an explicit formula for R in general. I don't want to give that, but just to let you know that there is one. And uh, in the case of the fundamental representation, the formula is not too bad, so let me write it. Where Eij is again the uh, elementary matrix. I, I wanted to write it down because at some point I will claim that something something is explicit, and in fact the explicit form like like the explicit part of the statement will write explicitly on that. So I wanted to show you that there is an actual formula, and also I wanted to point out that if you say say Q is one plus H bar, and you look at the So we get some sort of like phenomenon in H bar, and you look at the first non-trivial term, like the first H bar term, you get this uh, classical air matrix I was talking about before. So again, I'm sorry, I'm just like waving my hand a lot, but remember that this classical air matrix is the thing that was used in a way that I haven't explained to you to define this Poisson structure on G. And claim that this capital R is some sort of deformation specialization of this lowercase r, which is why this quantum group is a quantization of this Poisson structure, whatever that means exactly. Um. Sure. Uh, yeah, sure. Let, let me just change the bar. I mean, that's that the definition, but in that case, it's essentially reduced to that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. So the, the yeah, exactly. So that that's a module over G that has an action of this guy. statement uh, I mean not, it's it's not it's 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 a uh, it's a non trivial statement I mean there are I, th I think there are reasons why you would expect I mean I mean, I'm not sure this will be clarifying, but there, there is actually a m more general statement. <laughs> that 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 basically what this guy is proving that if you, nah, I'm not sure this will add. Like if you if you run this factorization homology for the category of sheaves on a sufficiently like nice object X, then the thing you get is basically sheaves on the mapping stack from S to X. 
it doesn't help. So uh, but somehow, it, like, like this is like the, the whole point of Toyization homology is like it's it's a non-commutative thing, and somehow this is a commutative version. So it's easier, but still non-trivial somehow. But it's. Yeah, you, 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 you yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm slightly confused. This, this equality form, really you should think of it as a definition. This, this one is a definition, okay. So the, this, this one is not free. Well, I, I guess I've, <laughs> I've done a terrible job because I, I thought I told you why this guy is related to the scan category of the yeah, I know y yeah, probably uh Well, I, I can't tell you what all objects are, but I can tell you what some objects are, and, and, and these are basically given by, by that, so I, um, yeah, make sure I got to answer that. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, just mark point on the surface labeled by some geo representation, yeah. And then if you, Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's 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 the image of a geo representation in some category. Yeah, it it turns out to be also itself a, a representation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as a as a like as a geo representation, it doesn't change. If that's your question, like you. You start with the surface, with mark point. You decorate this point by geo representation, and you take the tensor product. And 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 now the question is, yeah, yeah, it doesn't care about the surface. And then basically every uh, every braid in the surface gives you a morphism. The 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 braids in the surface. Yeah. I, I mayb yeah, maybe I can. I can. Uh, let let me try something. Uh, where is the? Yeah, like the 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 G module structure is 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 fixed. It's always the same. So it. You Yeah, so the okay. Um so you, you, you start with a G representation and on that structure doesn't change. You when you run this factorization of the business you want to add some structure. So let me do this for just one uh, so in, in I I gave you remember that I gave you several definitions of O of G. Like the algebra of function on G. On on one of them, I, I told you that for any uh, V in rod G, there is a, a certain operator XV in of the tensor of V. So I, I define a certain like explicitly I define a certain operator in that in that space. And I claim that this space is actually endomorphism of V in the category of the annulus in rub G. 
So the, 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 the morphism from the, Im so V is a G representation, so you can look at its image in here, given by the embedding of some disk. So you get an object in R. And on the morphism of this object in that category, this is this space. And I claim that XV is actually the image of like a just elementary loop. So this thing that goes behind and up, this is up to XV. Yeah, so basically the, this is the part that, that comes from the fact that it's representation of G, and there is this X square. The o of G, remember, is, is the same as O of the representation variety of the annulus. Yeah, I'm sorry, I agree that there's, there's a lot of things to unpack, yeah. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm glad. So yeah, the, the, I don't know if that, another way of saying that may, maybe that will help is that the, I told you that the, the, this version of the scan category that I defined, which doesn't use all representation of V, but just the fundamental one, what you get, um, I mean, basically if you want this scan category things, what you get is three modules of this. The for that tensor sum power of the, the basically the if you start with a certain tensor product of representation, the image in this will be the free module generated by that. Maybe that that's a better way to say that. Like in general, yeah, that's actually so something I will I will generalize later. So the so if you have a so you have your functor from rub G, factor into homology over any step to the surface. So this guy again is O of in rub G. And I claim that this functor is given by V map to O of R S tensor V. So this functor is really just a free module functor. Maybe I should have said that. And then basically, this guy is just a bunch of copies of O of G in the punctured case. So for every copy, you have an operator like that. And the generator of the fundamental group maps to those operators, basically. So that's how scans gives you morphisms in that category. Yeah. I hope this, yeah, thanks for making me be precise about that, oh, precise. Yeah, uh, this is still, I'm still waving my hand a lot and I keep losing the eraser. Yeah? Sure, sure. I I can totally do that. Yes. Sir. Oh yeah. Yeah, that. Yeah, I can I can do that. I guess a, a definition is, is the one I gave it's so well. Uh, <laughs> so let me just write the so. And I will explain that it means so. So first of all, this is indeed a hop algebra, and I will remind you what this means. And
Um, so if you take the enveloping algebra of GLN, uh, which basically is just the, uh, I, d I don't know if everybody knows what that is, but uh, uh, basically it's 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 the algebra freely generated by GLN as a vector space, and you mod out by the relation that say that in this algebra a b minus b a is the bracket of a and b for uh, a b in GLN. So this is an infinite dimensional algebra. Um, basically, the raison d'être, sorry for my, excuse my French, of this is, is that Lie algebra representation of GLN are the same as just linear representation of this associate to algebra. So that, that, that's why this exists. And, and we saw at the beginning, like one of the features of RubG is that you can take tensor product of representation. And this is true for representation of GLN as well, because, you know, they are pretty much the same. So if X is in GLN, then X acts on the tensor product of two things in the following way. So by definition, this is X acting on V tensor W plus V tensor X acting on W. So for the group version, you had like if if no, you take an element in capital GLN, it acts on the tensor product just diagonally, but somehow this is some sort of like infinitesimal like linear version, so now it becomes a sum. So an element of the Lie algebra on some module, tensor product of module, you act on the first component plus the other component. Um, one way to say that, again, is that this is actually a Hopf algebra, which means that there is a a map, an algebra map from U of GLN to two copy of U of GLN, which map. So this, I want this to be an algebra map. And I told you that the enveloping algebra is generated by that as an algebra. So it's enough to define the coproduct on those guy. And I just Bound this to be x tensor one plus one tensor x. Okay. So now I can write this by saying this is actually delta of x, which now is an element in two copies of U of GLN, acting on v tensor w. Okay. And of course, this coproduct should satisfy some axioms, which basically tells you that this operation of taking tensor product is actually associative. Like if I take a triple tensor product, I have a pretty like two different ways of, of acting on this, and I want them to be the same. Okay. So now, basically, <coughs> the general, sorry, definition of um, an Hopf algebra is that it's an algebra together with something like that, which satisfies those axioms. So in particular, the main feature of an uh, half algebra is, again, that you can take tensor products of, of modules. Say again? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm in particular, a half algebra has that. I'm not saying this is, yeah. And uh, so the claim is that this guy is a half algebra. So there's the, let's, I don't know, yeah, delta Q. Let me just call it UQ. So there is something like that, which satisfy in such a way that if I set Q equal one, I just get back this one. Okay. So the so the idea is so and and and, <coughs> and also the the product is is deformed and depends on Q. Um, it's not quite true like that, but, but this, those uh, more or less those two algebras are isomorphic as algebra. This is not true. This is almost true. Like they have the same finite dimensional representation basically. But the coproducts are different. Yeah. And in particular, it, if you look at this one, it's, it's, this is what's called a co-commutative algebra, 
which means that if I, I flip the two tensor, I get the same thing. Like if I flip those two tensor, I just get one tensor x plus x tensor one, so I just get the same thing. So here, let me write it that way. Delta is equal to delta two one. This is not true for this guy, but somehow there is a, a way to break that. So there is a this air matrix that belongs to the tensor square of this algebra. We are unsatisfied. Sorry, that's this. And so the idea is that now the, the co-product in one direction and on the co-product in the other direction, they are not equal, but I can go from one to the other basically by conjugating by error. Okay. And so that's why, and, and, and this satisfies this thing called the quantum young baxter equation, which basically is just a defining relation of the bread group. So this is how you get uh, the um, bread monoidal category. So the fact that this is true tells you that modulus of that is symmetric monoidal, and here you get that rub QG is bread monoidal. Yeah, so I, I just sort of told you that there is such a thing which add q equal one reduced to that, but I want to make a point that this this has a definition by generators on relation. This is really something explicitly defined. I mean, there are like very cool, very abstract reason why it exists, but like the original definition is really just by giving formulas. So you can you can actually do computation with that even if it's horrible, but you can everything. And uh, yeah. Um, oh, is there anything you see? I, I should. Yeah, uh, isn't that bit overkill? Yeah, you so. <laughs> yeah, so the. No, you're right. I should. I should say that. Like the. The there are other things that generalize. Like we. So we saw that now if, if V is a finite dimensional uh, GLN or GLN, but the same thing module, then V star is one as well. And again, uh, so not again, but the fix belong to GLN, then the action on some lambda in this space is by uh, lambda of minus x acting on land. And I need to put the minus because uh, I want the left action. And when I compose, if I put the x in inside the lambda, I will get the right action. So I have to put the This star is, is as, is as well, is a module as well. Sorry. Okay. So again, this is something that you can define at the level of module, but the the reason is that you actually have an anti-algebra map from u of gln to uh, u of gln opposite, which just map x to minus x. And uh, this thing is called an Antford. And basically, it allows you to talk about, to talk about duality. And um, again, there is uh, there is also uh, such an S in this quantum case. Uh, that finite dimensional modules have U of 
And then there is some extra data saying that there is a well-defined notion of threat. Morphisms of motion. Okay. And I guess I already sort of hinted at that, but maybe it's worth reminding that the I can actually picture those things. So this is this is braiding, aka this composition of the A matrix with P. And then I have this duality, so I have, I don't know, like visual tensor V. Uh, this is a map that take a linear form on the plate with V. And then I also have a, a map the other way around. Uh, okay, I mean, P here, tensor V. That satisfies this, this exact equation that. Uh, Sorry, wrong way. Uh, that Claudia also mentioned. Um, uh, you have to be a little bit careful about how things work out, so that's why you need this so-called ribbon structure. I don't want to go too much into it, but uh, 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 yeah, so basically you have this, this notion of duality that gives you this picture. And then basically you can stack all of this thing and you get tangles on braids, on knots, on stuff like that. And that's the, the sort of thing I was drawing in this cane category syntax. So yeah, maybe I should have started with that, but yeah, sorry. Okay. Uh, so just check the time. So I guess long, long story short, the idea that uh, if I sort of want to sum up what happened, so there is this character variety. This character variety has a Poisson structure. Poisson structure wants to be quantized. So it means that you, you want some non-commutative non algebra, which has a product that defines some parameter in such a way that like the first Basically, the first term is your commutative product, and then the second term is your Poisson bracket. So there is this, this standard notion of quantization that people care about. Okay, so that's that's one thing. So you want to quantize the character variety. Maybe you don't. I I do. Um, so then there is a, this other fact that some of the the Poisson structure on the character variety has very much to do with this classical air matrix I, I told you about. So basically, this is sort of like the main ingredient that, that shows that this Poisson structure exists. And what I was explaining before is that this capital R is a quantum version of this classical R matrix. So that there is a precise sense. That I don't want to get too much into it, but in, in with this quantum group is a quantization of this Poisson structure on G. So in particular, that, that's something I was planning to say at some point, so maybe I should say it. Oh, come on. <laughs> nope. Oh, yes. Oh, I changed world. <laughs> I never uh, walked that much in the. I haven't walked that much in a while. Okay. <laughs> So something that will actually be important at some point, so I might as well say it now, and I hope this will make sense, is that the So there is, there is basically this, uh, the, the general idea is, I, I told you there was this notion of uh, uh, G Poisson space. So again, this is a, a, a Poisson variety with an action of G, which is sort of compatible both with the Poisson structure on X and the Poisson structure on G. So you have to take the, this Poisson structure on G into account. 
And basically, the claim is that you want to turn that into an algebra together with the action of UQG, such that the multiplication is a morphism module. And the, the fancy way of saying that is you want this to be an algebra in rep QG. So basically, so I'm saying that rep, I mean, UQG and rep QG are themselves somehow a quantization of some stuff related to G. But they are, somehow that's not the important fact for us. The really important fact for us is that there's a natural, uh, I'm not sure how to say that, uh, uh, natural framework, the natural box where you want to put quantization of G Poisson spaces, which characterizes R. So again, a Poisson variety you want to be quantized into an associative algebra. But if you have a Poisson variety with a Poisson action of G in that sense, you actually want to quantize it into an algebra in this category, which again is really just an algebra in vector space in particular, together with an action of UQG in such a way that the multiplication is a morphism of, of representation. So you want, you want something like an equivariant quantization so again, if, if G didn't have a Poisson structure, or if it was zero, then the natural notion here would say, well, G should preserve the Poisson structure. And then quantization will again have an action of G. But the thing is that G itself has a Poisson structure. So somehow you need to quantize everything simultaneously. You want to quantize X on the action of G on the Poisson structure on G. And somehow this is the correct way of doing that. Does that make sense? Not really. Uh, 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 anyway, so that's that's like the. I mean, yeah. I hope this is not too philosophical, but somehow one one sort of common trend in this lecture is that we are constantly moving between these two problematics. There is like the Poisson stuff on the quantization stuff and then there is a topology and the claim is that those two things are really related so there is a problem of quantizing this and on the other hand there is this like topological fi feature that says that you can basically with QGD do like not invariant but like, like for example the Jones polynomial can be a recursive function from this kind of construction uh, basically the Jones polynomial is the invariant you get for, for GL2 or SL2 and uh, and uh, and I claim that those two, those two apparently different things are actually somehow the same thing. Like the, the problem of quantizing character variety on, on somehow studying this topological invariant. And uh, the, the way you do that is you have this topological construction that take rub QG and produce some category attached to some surface. And the claim is that it will be a quantization of the character variety. I'm not saying there is a sort of standard way to do it. It's no, no. I mean that uh, that no, no. I mean that that's a, uh, that's not a construction. That's a question. That's a problem. Like like if I have something like that, I want to construct something like that, which basically at uh, q equal one gives uh, o of x, um, uh, I don't know, or rather like if q is one plus h bar. Then I want the, so if, if this is my algebra, I want the multiplication to be commutative multiplication of O of x plus h bar times the Poisson bracket plus I order stuff. So this is, I, I mean, it's not, I, th there is no reason for this to exist in general or, or, or anything. It's a question like whether, whether it's possible or not. You get you could just get O of X. Yeah. yeah. So that again, there is there is a general question. Yeah, sorry, I, sh I should have said that. But there is a general question of if I give you a Poisson structure, can you quantize it? And what it means to quantize it is exactly that. I want a multipli. I want an associative algebra that depends on some parameter in such a way that the multiplication is the multiplication of O of x 
plus h bar times the Poisson bracket plus higher the term that makes it an associative multiplication. So that, that's one question. And then there is an elaboration of this question is like what, what if x is actually a g Poisson space? Then in that case, you also want that, but in addition, you want an action of the quantum group. Okay. So again, if you, you start with x, which is just Poisson, we want to quantize it. If you have like an action of just g, you want to keep the action of g. But if you have a Poisson action of g, you have to quantize everything at once, like the Poisson structure of g, the action, and the Poisson variety you consider. So somehow this, this is just to explain in which sense, like why I'm using the word quantization, but that, uh, that's not the only motivation, like, like the, uh, I don't know. Again, there's always this like back and forth between quantization of, on, on topology, like whether you can quantize character variety in that way is an interesting question, but it actually has been solved in various different ways a, a long time ago. And in a way, what I'm talking about is a way to sort of unify the different constructions. But behind it, there is also the like topological question, like how do you compute factorization homology? Uh, like somehow. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm saying that there are several related motivations for, for what I'm talking about. There is, this is one question, how do you quantize character varieties? Yeah. And, uh, and basically, like, people did that somehow by hand yeah. back in the day using... Yeah. So the main slogan is that if I take factorization homology of rub G, I get the character variety. If I take factorization homology of rub QG, I get the quantization of the character variety. That's th basically th that, that's the slogan. Um, but again, that can be you know interesting both ways. Like if you want to quantize character variety, that's nice. But maybe you don't care about that, but you care about like computing factorization homology in interesting example, and that's that's one of them. And, uh, uh, so basically, like, like the lecture will be about how to compute factorization homology in that case. And one application is to get quantization. And another application is just, you know, you might want to compute factorization homology. And maybe that's the part which is more interesting to topologists. But, uh, but again, I, 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 like in the classical construction, I, I really try to make clear that this Poisson structure on this like scan stuff on drawing loop on surface were really like Two two faces of the same coin, basically, right? So this 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 Poisson question and this topological question, they are really like two two sides of the same thing. Uh, yeah. Have I lost all of you? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, oh thank you. You you you're the you're the only one who said no. I'm I'm glad. Hurrah for Zoom. Uh, yeah. yeah so I, mean, I guess, uh, I guess my, my time is up anyway, but of course you can uh, keep asking questions about this because I, was, I realize that. Uh, <laughs> well, because I, I didn't do what I was planning for today. Uh, Basically, my plan for today was to, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I know we're like, like, who cares about quantum groups anyway? I should have said anyway. No, no, but I mean, my, 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 my plan for, t so basically, m my real plan was to compute factorization homology for rub QG, but then I want to argue that actually you, it's, it's easier and you can compute factorization homology for arbitrary bread non real categories. So that's what, like the main point I want, the, the, the high point of this lecture was supposed to be that. Like how do you actually compute factorization homology for an arbitrary bread non real category? So my plan for today was to tell you what excision means in that particular theory. So Claudia gives a sort of like general picture that gluing surfaces correspond to 
relative tensor product. So I wanted to talk about module categories over monoidal categories and how we take tensor products of that. And then tomorrow I wanted to tell you how to compute factorization homology using that, basically. Yes? Um, I mean, the answer has to be yes, probably in several ways, but uh, whether the direct meaning is unclear. Like the. Co so, bre breaded or rather ribbon categories gives you like leaks invariant. And Kovanov homology is expected to come from some sort of like bread monoidal 2 category. But I don't think anybody knows what that bread monoidal 2 category is yet. So that's, 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 I mean, that people are looking for, for it. Like, there are, we know pieces of that structure, but not the whole structure. But if you had that, you could run factorization homology. It, I mean, it's clear that the definition of a bread monoidal category, two categories should be like any two algebra somewhere. So technically, you could run factorization homology, and you get something like Kovanov homology for links in second surface or something like that. So that's, that's the, not so scary answer. I have a scary answer. So the, 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 say? Yeah. Uh, I mentioned Walker at the beginning, but they have a few, like, the other, you mean this block complex? Yeah, so, so Morrison and Walker, but they're, is that fair to say that they have some sort of, like, scan theoretic approach to Kovana homology or something like that? Yeah, so I think it's it, it, it's it's related to the scary thing I was about to say. So, <laughs> the so here you get something that is I mean not so scary. You get something you, you get surfaces you get categories for surfaces. So, in the language of fully extended TFTs, you get something that looks like the two-dimensional part of a four-dimensional TFT, basically. And uh, well, I guess the idea is that Kovana homology is supposed to be five-dimensional TFT with sort of dimensional reduction, which means that you evaluate on many forms and then you cross with a circle, is supposed to work over that. So basically, here's a basic ag ingredient is rub QG on Kovana homology is supposed to categorize that. And then to rub QG, you get something for other surface, so you could categorize and then apply factorization homology and would get something like Kovana homology on, like the value of the Kovana homology TFT on surfaces that these are the two categories. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? I think, I guess so, I think Claudia would know the answer. <laughs> you weren't listening. Uh, the, the, the question is whether factorization homology of a symmetric monoidal category always only see like the pair one of the manifold or not, not the higher homogeneous group somehow. Uh, that, that's, that's a different question, right? 
Yeah, but I mean. So, so you don't want just to be like module for some algebra, but like that particular algebra. Uh, I, I, I yeah, I'm, I'm, it, this is not really like. Again, I think one 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 thing that if you run factorization homology or differential or something, basically you you, you get uh, maps from S to X, basically. Well, you know, quasi Gramsci on that. But I mean, if I don't want to say the word stack, like if you're a topologist, you should think of like mapping space or or, or something like that. Uh, but no, actually, yeah. And so the question is whether this thing uh, sees more than the homotopy type of X. I think in the, this, again? It sees, yeah, even in the like one, one categorical, like I really mean uh, just a stack, not the derived stack or anything, like in the, in the Abelian setting. Oh, of course, yeah. Oh yeah, indeed. No, sorry. Very good point. So it probably works only because yeah, BG is a K pi one basically more or less. I, I mean, yeah, but here we are taking the we are not taking the classical space of BS B two because otherwise we would get something like G principal bundle, while here we get flat bundle basically. So we are looking at B as a discrete group, and we are taking its classifying space or stack. So we, we are not we, we are not using top any topology in, in, in that in that. That's why you get like flat connection or you know flat bundle or the character right not the modular stack of principal G bundle would be. Much more complicated, and, and wouldn't be something topology like really topological anyway. I think. Yeah. Like yeah, definitely this this would depend on more of the more than the pi one. Uh, yeah, indeed. If you, if you replace x by something else that b of 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 the discrete group, then you get something that actually sees more than the pi one. Yeah, thank, thanks for pointing that out. I, I forgot it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but this uranus is more than pi one. That's that was the yeah, question. So yeah, to to read that he he this whole thing is only the pi one only because we are looking at like flat bundle, which by definition depends on yeah as the same as representation of pi one. But if you if here x is some more complicated object, a priori you would see a higher homotopy group for that as well. Like I don't know if there is a stack inversion of of B G when G is seen as a new group. Probably there is. I just don't know anything about the stack. But in that case, again, you will stack get like the the modular stack of principal G bundle on S, which definitely is more than the pi one. Yeah. But I don't think it will be Poisson in that case. Yeah. Any more questions?
thanks again.